My name is Thomas, and I teach high school children. When these children finish my course, I have three things I always tell them. Now, the first thing is eat properly. The second thing is find out what you want to do with your life and try to describe it in one sentence. This can be <clears throat> several things. The main point is that you take your career and life choices towards this one sentence. And of course, there are several paths in order to reach this one sentence and your goal. The third thing, and that's what I'm here to talk about with you today, is try out new stuff. So when you hear try out new stuff, you probably think, oh, do I have to get a new partner? Do I have to change my job? Or do I have to jump out from a plane? Obviously, you don't need to jump out from a plane in order to do new stuff. So when I say do new stuff, it can be several things. The first is you can change the way uh, you go home from work, or you can try out a different pizza, or do a new hobby. And one of my personal favorites is put yourself in a new so uh, social constellation. Who knows, you might end up doing a Zumba lesson or speaking at a TED talk. With me today, I have two arguments and three things that you can go home and try. Now, the first argument is your perception of your lifespan. So when you try out something new, you are able to break the daily grind and you can see you have done uh, several stuff. So when you think back on your life, like I think back for a year, you can see, okay, I have done this, 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 and this. And thus your perception of your life, it will feel like you have lived a longer life. The second argument is that our brains are wired for exploration. Now, what does this mean? It means the trade uh, for exploration is evolved into us. You simply get happy by trying out new stuff. Now, why is it so? It's because our ancient brains are developed for the hunter-gatherer age. And in the hunter-gatherer age, once you had enough food, your family was safe, and you had enough water, you, and you had excess energy, you could use this energy to go out and explore. You could explore where are the best caves to hide, where are the deer herd going, or where are the best berry bushes. Once you know where these are, of course, the next day you are able to survive better because you know how to get food and stuff. So this is the main point, that dopamine is simply given to your brain when you explore, because this trait was evolved into us. The first thing you can go home and try is try to create or repair something and try to use Google, YouTube, WikiHow, whatever you want. All, all the stuff works. And you will feel that it truly is an empowering feeling being able to have all the skills and knowledge of the humankind in your phone and your back pocket. So go home and try that. Of course, the Empire State Building was not built by one man in one day. So there's some learning curve to it. The next thing you can go home and you can try is uh, try to improve your life. Now, of course, everyone says, ah, I want to improve my life, but I'm a scientist, so what do I do? I follow the scientific method. So first, I make an observation. Most of you probably already know uh, which foods make you happy, which activities uh, gives you energy and which ones drain your energy. But when you put it into the scientific method, you will be able to do it in a systematic manner. So what you do is, first you see a pattern or uh, pose a question, then form your hypothesis, do the test and analyze. And then you draw your conclusion and if this is actually an improvement to your life, then Go for it. If it doesn't work, then of course, okay, I have to rethink this 
you form a new hypothesis, and then <coughs> go from the back again. An example of this could be, I have an idea that I work great in 90-minute cycles. Now, these cycles could be, I take 10 minutes of getting into the zone, understanding what is this task about, and then 60 minutes of doing concentrated work, and then 20 minutes of resting, social interaction, or uh, some superficial work. Then I do this for maybe a cycle or two, and then I feel, okay, this was perfect for me, then great, I write this down, and I now I know this is how I work best. If it doesn't work, I thought maybe, okay, I could actually do 20 more minutes uh, of concentrated work before doing the next cycle. Then you now you have more data, and you do uh, your new hypothesis. Otherwise, you can, of course, uh, say, okay, I need five minutes rest in between to go to the toilet or something. That's fine as well. So you make these cycles so it fits for your life. The third thing, and you can go home and try, I have borrowed a story from a philosopher named Nietzsche. Now, in this story, there are several stages. The first stage is the camel, and it ends up with you in a more conscious life than before. Now, the camel is very obedient. It says yes to everything. Now, will you <clears throat> do the laundry? Yes. Will you mow the lawn? Yes. Will you take this job? Yes. Will you follow our culture and norms? Yes. The camel just says yes to everything. So, of course, it has its problems. Now, the next stage is the lion. The lion is fierce, and the lion says no. Will you do the laundry? No. Will you mow the lawn? No. Will you, do you want an ice cream? No. <laughs> Obviously, everyone wants ice cream. So maybe not the best stage to be in either. The third stage is the dragon. Now, the dragon is cunning and resistant. The dragon is where you say no to all the stuff that your habits, that your parents taught you, that you have from your family and, and society. And it's very hard to spot all of these things. So, of course, you don't have to do all of them at once. But it could be you have to have 100 followers on Instagram in order to be happy or I have to drink alcohol at social settings in order to be part of the club. And then the dragon says no to all of this stuff. And of course, this requires some energy, but <clears throat> it's a stage to go through. Now, the last stage is the child. Now, the child says yes to all the things it wants. And it knows why it does so. So it could be, will you do the laundry? Yes. And you say yes, because you know this will make your partner happy. Will you do the <clears throat> mow the lawn? No. Let the grass grow. Do you want an ice cream? Yes. Yes, please. I do want an ice cream. So when you reach the stage of the child, you will live a more conscious life and be able to see, OK, this is actually something I want, and this new thing I will put into my life. This is all I have for you today. I urge you to go home, try out something new, and see what happens.